Project Blue Water is a pharmacist-driven project. Unfortunately, no one from the pharmacist team was available today to present, so they've asked me to do so. And I'm also going to tack on another project that NQ Dry Tropics and a delivery partner, Ag, um, Ag Lannis, um, delivered, which is the Reef Trust 7 Precision Ag project. Um, I think everybody here would know who pharmacists are. They're based in uh, the Burdekin and Mackay, um, and also up in far north Queensland and northern New South Wales. Um, and this project was funded through the um, Reef Trust Partnership um, with funding that came through from Great Barrier Reef Foundation. Um, so Project Blue Water, or Project Blue Water 2, which is a follow-on from the original Project Blue Water, um, was a, um, a project specifically targeting pesticide management practice improvement through tailored agronomic support. Um, the project, uh, to summarise, included 170 individual projects um, with um, tailored chemical management plans uh, and covered over 19,000 hectares of land in the lower Burdekin region. Delivery of the project involved multiple workshops focused on improving efficiency and the selection of lower risk chemicals to achieve um, an effective control that the growers were seeking to achieve. Um, so a lot of one-on-one -on -one tailored extension in that whole project delivery over three and a half years. Pharmacist guys are pretty smart. They know how to deliver projects on ground and obviously they tailored the project to make sure that they were delivering outcomes for landholders and the subsequent you know, investor outcome, which was the improvement in the pesticide practices. So, you know, they went out and talked to growers. They had um, steering, steering groups to sort of inform how that project was best to roll out. And they, you know, one of the things that was highlighted was that a lot of spray rigs needed to be assessed for their efficacy and then where necessary those spray rigs could be upgraded um, with a focus focus on compliance so using the appropriate nozzle for the chem, for the chemical that was being chosen um, and correct configuration of those spray rigs um, and I myself attended one of the events that pharmacists ran um, it was quite innovative actually where they sprayed a dye in a paddock and then at night you could walk through the paddock with a torch a black light and you could actually see you know where the spray was actually landing whether it was effectively landing on the target species or not so just really innovative little techniques like that to sort of um, engage with growers and demonstrate how different nozzles performed and how different nozzles effectively um, delivered a safe and appropriate amount of chemical to the target the slide here physically like, gives you a summary of all of the different outcomes that were um, achieved through the project with all of the uh, spray water quality sampling, which incidentally a lot of the source water that growers were using was have, having quite an influence on the efficacy of chemicals. So different water quality from different sources was actually affecting the, the quality of the mix. So they picked that up and were able to sort of help growers to appropriately blend water mixes to make sure that they weren't compromising the quality of the herbicide mix. 20 booms were rebuilt, a number of other equipment upgrades, a lot of key uh, cal calibration of equipment and also decontamination kits provided to growers and, and in total $300,000 in physical hardware, including nozzles, nozzle bodies, plumbing, pumps, sensors and rate controllers were provided as part of the project to participating growers. Farms have produced more than 50 um, communication products across various platforms, 13 workshops and field days, 11 case studies generated, and six field trials which actually generated data which has been forwarded on to Paddock to Reef, I believe. So some of the project outcomes have been, uh, a significant one is the pesticide decision support tool, which has really been a helpful um, tool for enabling a grower with the help of an ag uh, agro agronomic support to select um, a product which is going to achieve the result for a similar cost but at a lower environmental risk. So by, by being able to make an informed decision about which chemical to use, the grower can choose to use the chemical that's going to have a lower environmental risk. The risk unit reduction, um, pesticide risk unit reduction is a, a relatively new metric that was mentioned previously and that's the, that's the metric that's going to be used for pesticides, so setting of pesticide targets and evaluating project success from here on in. Um, so pharmacists through this project far exceeded their target pesticide um, risk unit reduction target. You know, very good effort there. Uh, they took 140 end-of-field water samples to help uh, analyse the results 
um, of pesticide contaminants within runoff water. And that, that information has all been fed into the CSIRO 1622 water quality app. Um, and as mentioned before, there were six demonstration sites which also contributed data to that. An evaluation of the project. Um, growers have appreciated the high level of assistance that's been provided to them one-on-one, -on -one, um, better outcomes, much improved spray setups, better efficacy, selection of lower risk pesticide products, um, and also troubleshooting, you know, a number of factors that were perhaps um, affecting the efficacy of their, of their spray practices, including water quality and nozzle setups, pressure, calibration, that sort of thing. So improve, ultimately improve control of problem weeds, which otherwise would be affecting um, productivity and profitability of those crops. So that's a, a quick wrap up of Project Blue Water um, and just acknowledging the investor, the um, Reef Trust Partnership and the Great Barrier Reef Foundation and also the good work done by pharmacists and the Project Blue Water team. So I'll just move on to the second project which has dealt with some pesticide uh, management in the Lower Burdekin and that's the Reef Trust 7 Making GPS Work For You project or otherwise known as Precision Aid project which was run um, through our uh, delivery partner Aglantis. So the purpose of this project was to um, make better use of growers' existing GPS systems. So historically there's been a lot of uh, Reef Trust investment in GPSs and rate controllers around the Lower Burdekin as, as in other regions. Um, and there was some, we gathered some information to demonstrate that those devices, whilst they were being used well, had a lot more potential. And so we said to Reef Trust, look, we think we can get some more out of, these, uh, out of these, this equipment, out of this historical investment. We'll go back out to growers and engage with them. I guess the buy-in for growers was we were trying to demonstrate that the GPS systems would help them to demonstrate compliance in their um, pesticide application practices by having automated record keeping through the GPS systems. Other values for growers were simplif simplification of tasks, just having a systematic and consistent practice, record keeping, reducing the occurrence of errors in record keeping, you know, which then makes up for um, shortages of labour on farms. And obviously accurate measurement and application helps with reducing input costs. And obviously um, adopting this technology and using it more effectively would then lead to greater precision of application and enhanced decision making by being able to capture real time data and analyse that um, once you've got a pool of uh, a reasonable pool of data, which helps with future verification of practices. From 2021 to 2024, we were able to engage with 125 farmers and those 125 farmers actually have around 285 GPS units, which was more than what we expected. So they actually made for a lot more work. We, we actually, if we'd have known there was 285 GPSs, we might not have decided 125 was a good target. But anyway, we got there. Uh, all the GPS setup files were revised um, and re-uploaded uh, into the GPSs. Um, accurate spatial block boundaries were mapped for over 26,000 hectares of sugarcane land and about 1,300 hectares of horticultural land, uh, and those were also uploaded into the GPS systems. Uh, there was $160,000 in incentives with a, with a $262,000 uh, co-contribution amount from growers uh, that went into GPS system upgrades and also um, enabling uh, greater utilisation of rate controllers. So that was focused around nutrient and pesticides. Um, and the, the only target we had in this project was actually a DIN target, but we obviously have delivered some improvements in pesticide as well. Um, I don't have that number. So just a typical um, GPS system within a tractor. So what did the project achieve? Well, at the beginning of the project, the black line, uh, the, the black section of the graph identifies the baseline and the blue is the improvement. What we found was that about 70% of GPSs had permanent AB guidance lines. Sometimes, unfortunately, they had multiple guidance lines, which isn't ideal. So by cleaning those machines up and setting, setting up a single guidance line, we're able to bring it up to every GPS unit that we um, participate, or every GPS unit that we worked with improved guidance lines. Uh, similarly with boundary setup, boundary setup was pretty inaccurate across the board. That's been rectified, all, all those block boundaries are now accurately mapped and that data is now sitting in the GPS systems. We managed to get improved record keeping from 2% up to 55%, so there's still some work to do there, but pretty big, pretty good um, increase in um, you know, record keeping is what it's about. 
Uh, similarly with section control, um, we were able to increase that uh, by 37%, still some work to do, and swath control, which is um, you know, the accuracy within the paddock, um, we made a significant increase in there as well. So overall, um, we actually exceeded what we thought we would achieve, albeit we had to work in a lot more GPS systems than we originally planned. That's it from me, sorry. I'm not a GPS expert, so I don't have, I'm not the, I'm not the field officer involved in the project delivery, um, but the overall objective of the project was to make additional use of those GPS systems that were in, the track, in, in tractors and implements already, and also to um, improve connectivity between GPSs and rate controllers so that farmers were able to make greater use of those units. So we've added value to previous investments um, made by Rift Trust. So I'm happy to um, take any questions on, on board or any comments.